Hello and welcome to Believe TV. My name is Bruce Sampson. I am your host. Thank you all so much for joining. I see we already have some people uh, waiting uh, to watch us right now. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, for those of you who are watching for the very first time, just want you to know that this is an interactive forum. And so although I'll be speaking and talking to our guest, you are welcome to participate as well. So just right there uh, below in the comments, feel free to uh, at the very least, say hello and tell us where you're watching. And uh, if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to uh, put those in the comments as well. So whether you're watching live with us or whether you are watching on replay, we will still like to interact with you and we will get back to you and answer your questions and, and all of that good stuff. Uh, Believe TV is also a, a platform where the ultimate goal is to inform, entertain, but also just to, to send out positive vibes and to uplift um, our motto, which is the same for my Believe Performing Arts Camps, is to embrace the possible. And so I love having conversations with, with people that I find uh, interesting and fascinating and sharing them with, with you, the audience, in hopes that it will also enlighten you in some way as well and inspire you as well. So. Again, thank you guys for joining. Today's uh, guest is someone that I just met this month for the very first time. Um, he is a director and filmmaker for McGee Sarton Films. It's a production company that he started in 2020. Uh, his first film, Milltown and Milltown Part Two, The People, uh, were released uh, just earlier this month, February uh, 2021. He is also the founder of the Bogalusa Sports Network, which is a network that broadcasts live sporting events in Bogalusa, Louisiana, which is my hometown. Woo woo. And um, both of his companies are, are designed to be uh, project positive images of his hometown. And we're, we're going to talk about more about his story and his upbringing and all that good stuff. But uh, I saw his film, his documentary, and I was uh extremely impressed and moved and uh yeah i just wanted to have this opportunity to to speak with him especially given the fact that uh this is the last day of february black history month we began with uh with a couple of uh distinguished uh african-american guests at the beginning of the month and we're rounding out with another one as well and so without further ado it is my pleasure and my honor to bring onto the screen to join us, Mr. Kevin McGee. Hey. Hey, Bruce. How you, how you doing, man? Uh, doing great. Thank you so much for taking that time out of your uh, Sunday afternoon to do this. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Now, I'm, I'm going to start off a little weird. So <laughs> um, I, I mentioned to the, mentioned this to you when I met you after seeing your film. And, you know, we, we had a chance to talk for a little bit, you know, afterward. Um, I mentioned that your mom and I were classmates. We graduated yeah. together, yeah. you know, and I didn't even make that connection until I was at the, you know, uh, at your, your documentary uh, filming or, or, or showing. And so, um, so that was, you know, I got a chance to see her and then to make that connection. So, so that was cool. And before this show is over, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something else that's kind of, kind of funny and kind of cool um, about that. And I'm, I'm going to leave it with this little nugget. I'm going to say this, that you don't know, you don't, you probably don't realize it right now, but I played a part in your film too, and, and you don't even know it. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to finding that mystery out. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so you're from Bogalusa, Louisiana, um, and you, so you did graduate from Bogalusa High School. Yeah, uh, class of 2010. Okay, great. And uh, and where did you uh, end up going to college? I went to the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Go Cajuns. Okay. And what was, um, so filmmaking. So, so tell me this. Did you, how long had, had this been a thing for you or an interest for you? Probably six months. <laughs> when oh, I, seriously? Uh, <laughs> seriously. I, so I started with photography uh, in March of last year. So I was working for American Airlines. The you know the pandemic was just starting. Um, I was actually on vacation, 
And normally I travel and go somewhere, but couldn't at the time. So for 10 days, I'm just at my house. And I started creating logos and Photoshop. Like I, I learned Photoshop a few years ago. So I started making logos and um, finally I went out and purchased a camera. I had a camera already, but it wasn't, you know, just an older camera that I was taking pictures. And the only experience I had was I took uh, my, at the time, my fiance, her graduation pictures. And with the camera that I had, they actually came out good. So I was like, okay, well, if I go get a newer camera, you know, with the newer technology and learn a little bit more on uh, Photoshop, then, you know, I can start, you know, a photography business. So I did all that. And um, next thing you know, um, American came out in June and offered us a retirement package, you know, because they needed people to leave because, you know, the demand for travel was so low. So I took the package and I was like, well, you know, I already started a photography business and, um, you know, I just started taking pictures and it started with just like senior portraits and, you know, fashion. Um, I started really taking a, a lot of, of my early pictures of my, my wife. So like, if you go back and look at like my Instagram and all that stuff, you know, pictures of my wife. And um, I remember we were in DC and this was, we were doing a wedding. And it was probably, I'd say probably back in maybe July. And it, we were in the hotel room and it just hit me. And I was like, BSN, like Bogalusa Sports Network. I don't know where it came from. Uh, I told my wife about it and she looked at me and she was like, like five minutes later, I already had the logo. Like I went on uh, Photoshop real quick and I made the logo. Like if you, I have two logos and the first one was more catered to like the ESPN font. But I went back and before, I think it was after like week one of football season, I went and changed it to like a more modern logo. And that it all just happened very fast. And um, that was in July. And it just hit me when I was in Bogalusa one day. I was like, I mean, we got the equipment. We might as well do it. And we came to Bogalusa in August, first week of August. And for a week straight, you know, seven days, we got 60 hours of footage and the planning for the film was, it was pretty quick. Uh, I reached out to everyone that I was going to interview probably in a week and set a date. And we had about three, three or four interviews per day. And uh, that's how I started. You know, that people think I've been doing film and photography for years. And I just started in March of 2020. So that's amazing. That's tomorrow's amazing. a year, you know, so. Now, now, now tell me, so are, like traditionally, are you the type of person that like you think of something, you go, oh, I'm just going to do it. Like you, you don't mess around or was this unusual for you? My wife hates it. I just do it. Like I'm so quick with it. Like if I think of um, like Milltown, I had to hurry up, get everything in order and go film. Uh, the sports network I had to make sure I had everything right now so I can go film. Um, so if I think about it, I'm just going to go and do it and. I mean, sometimes I've done that before where I said I'm going to do something and I do it and I just do it just because I said I was going to do it. Like yeah. I, I always do that. I don't know why, but I do it all the time. Okay. That's very cool. Okay. I'm going to take a quick second and just uh, acknowledge some of the folks who are watching right now. Of course. We have, uh, Caleb Brown, who says good evening, who's watching. Uh, Mr. Jerry Dyson says be blessed always. Yes, brother. Um, we have, oh, Caleb Brown is saying that he's in Compton, uh, yeah. California. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have Miss Miss Deborah Young, who's uh, in Bogalusa. Good evening to you. Uh, and then uh, I was telling you about off air, uh, one of my friends. Yeah. I can always count on her, Miss Karen Zenthofer uh, from Hamburg, Germany. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining as well. Uh, Mr. Dyson is in New Orleans. Via, via Bogalusa, okay. <laughs> uh, also from California, a good friend of mine, Dee Dee. Uh, here's somebody you may know. It's my cousin, Larry yeah. Watterson Jr. is in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And, okay, is this what he always called you? <laughs> a lot of people either know me as that or uh, Miss Karen's son or Lil Don from my parents, so, yeah. <laughs> 
No, were were you and Larry classmates? No, no. Um, I uh, believe it was his cousin, uh, Ryan Watterson, cousin, okay. nephew, one of them. Uh, he graduated the year before me, so I went to school with Ryan. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. gotcha. And then I wonder who that is. Who is that? Oh, and there's your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Ryan's a nephew. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, again, thank you all for watching and and uh, and participating in uh, in this discussion. So, so did you have? Um, I, I know you say you you know you just you were there. You had the equipment. You're like, let's just let's just do this. Did you? Did you walk in like this is the thing I'm, I'm always interested in when it comes to creative people, mm -hmm. um, the creative process for me, you know, like so what you started out with and whatever your in, intent was in the beginning, does that mirror what you ended up with or 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 was it a journey? No, um, originally, I didn't know what the film was going to be about. I went okay. into it. Um, I wrote it after. Um, instead of writing it before, I wrote it after because I didn't know what it was going to be about. I didn't know if it was going to be about, you know, civil rights movement. I didn't know if it was going to be about sports, uh, just history. Um, so what I did was I just I went to Bogalusa and I filmed everything. I have footage of everything hmm. in Bogalusa um, from drone footage uh old uh, infrastructure i have footage of everything and um looking back at it i probably should have wrote the film first um because i went in and filmed so much you know have so much footage but i mean when i go back to <clears throat> when i go back to um i being that i have that footage i can use it for other things though like i can use it for if i'm doing a commercial or a drone scene before you know bsn on friday night like i have all of that footage so um, but no, the, the film ended up being, um, actually when it was going to be a, a small project at first and then when WWL picked it up and when it started getting a whole bunch of shares, once I released the first trailer, I had to make sure it was going to be exactly what everyone thought it was going to be. Um, because when it first, uh, it was supposed to come out in the fall and, um, it, it blew up and I couldn't put it out yet. I had to perfect it and make sure it was exactly what you know, ended up being. And actually, it wasn't supposed to be a part two. Uh, part two happened just because I felt like it was a deeper story, like to make it more personal from the actual people that were in the first film. Uh, if you notice, uh, part one was more catered to Bogalusa itself, the history. But everyone kept saying, you know, what they enjoyed the most about the city was the people. So in part two, it was catered to the people, their stories. And you had different people like Kevin Brown, you know, people that uh, like he it says in the film, he was incarcerated and how he bounced back from that. You know, now he's a business owner on, you know, Columbia Street. To me, that's a big thing. You know, seeing a black man own a business on Columbia Street and he has two businesses to be you know, exact. So things like that, you know, give something for younger people to look up to. And, you know, like in his case, you know, people that make mistakes, they can bounce back, they can recover from that. Um, and then, of course, like legends like Coach McGee, like hearing his story, um, you know, hearing the Little League story from Mr. Timmons, like things like that. And that's why I wanted to dive deeper into part two so you can actually understand the stories from the actual people that I was telling you about Bugaloosa in part one. Okay. Well, for, for the benefit of folks who haven't seen it and, and some of the folks who may be in other areas, um, and and one thing I, I, I want to say now is that before uh, or once we're done, I'll probably go back and put in the comments uh, links to the film so that if you haven't seen it, uh, you guys can watch it because it is it is available online uh, on Vimeo, correct? Yeah, Vimeo. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you'll be able to uh, to watch both uh, both films, part one and part two. Um, and I'll I'll be honest and say I haven't seen part two yet. But but I'm going to I I have it lined up to do that. Um, I guess. So I, I'm I'm curious what did you do any 
any studying? Like, ha like, have you been like a student of, of movies and films and documentaries and stuff? Or, um, so did you have anything as a guide or was this just intuition and just your feeling and gut and YouTube? <laughs> that was yeah. it. YouTube. Um, in, in college, my roommate, he was, um, he was studying film and like theater. And I remember him just, you know, he's just laying in bed and watch movies like all day, all day. Um, and, you know, all I did was looked up on YouTube how to set up the camera, like what angle. Like if you notice, like in the film, the interview, uh, the people that were interviewing aren't looking at the camera. They're looking at the interviewer, you know, like things like that. I looked all that up online and um different like shadows lighting you know camera settings because like i said before i you know i never filmed besides i was doing you know commercials um you know how to fly the drone you know which cinematic views to use things like that all came from youtube um you know different angles uh using objects you know to blur out different things like all that came from just watching youtube for probably a good two weeks and trying to figure out which camera to buy, um, you know, things like which software I'm going to use to edit the film, like things like that. So no, I didn't go to school or anything. I didn't, um, and that that's the thing. The guy that helped me uh, edit the film, he's in film school. Uh, he's in school. Uh, well, he's he got into film school after the film, but he was in college studying this. So like things like he was looking like how you already know how to do this well. Like in college, I would make videos and I knew how to edit them on my phone, things like that. But now I have the equipment, you know, to go to the next step and uh, create better content, better quality, things like that. Okay. That, that's, it's still blowing my mind that you, <laughs> you went that fast from, you know, yeah. Because <laughs> even when I was thinking about it today, about uh, talking about, it, I'm look, I'm looking at you know, your bio and everything, and and thinking to myself, wait a minute, we're still in February, so that means I just saw the premiere of it, mm -hmm. and you started filming in August with not even really being sure what you were going to end up with, you know, mm -hmm. like that. That's incredible. That's that's just an amazing thing. Thank um, you. It really. I mean, that was probably like one of the first projects that I actually started on it and saw it, you know, come together from that long. Like that took, it was only supposed to take like two months. And by the time we had the premiere, the premiere was like, okay, it finally happened. Like we, we filmed this movie. Uh, it was funny because <laughs> when, when WWL first saw it, like the headline was like filmmaker. And I was like, I'm not a filmmaker. <laughs> I'm like, I just, <laughs> I just started doing this. Like, I'm not a filmmaker. And then now it's like really official. Like, I can say I'm a director. I can say I'm a writer. I can say, you know, I'm a filmmaker now. Like, I have two films under my belt. And, um, you know, when I look at, sometimes I'm down on myself because I'm like, okay, I feel like the business should be here. I feel like I should be uh, on a different, you know, level. But then when I step back and be like, I mean, I just did this in August and, you know, I have two films, you know, since August and I've only been a photographer for a year and I've done, you know, numerous weddings and things like that. Like when I look at it like that, I'm like, this is the beginning. And I was telling my wife earlier, I was like, I feel like we're right here. Like we're on to something Like we're almost there. And, um, you know, I feel like it's coming together and I feel like, you know, we're on the right track, you know, just the right person, the right company sees you know, my work, it can, it can soar. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and to be honest, it's, it's, it's hard for me to believe. I mean, I believe you, but it's hard mm -hmm. to believe. Come on, we don't, we don't believe like, TV, man. You got to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, just like when you, 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 you look at films and stuff like, you know, just look at stuff that comes out of Hollywood. Right. And you, you hear about, Oh, you know, when they green light, you know, a project or whatever, how long it takes for something to happen. But one thing I love that you said is, um, you know, just it's just that notion of just saying, you know, I I wanted to do it, so I I tapped into the resources that I had available to me, mm 
YouTube, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, you mm -hmm. did your research and then you did your work and then you just went to it. And that's, uh, that's one of the things, like I said in the beginning, that Believe is about is embracing the possible, you know, mm -hmm. rather than making excuses or saying what can and can't be done, you know, just saying, no, it's possible and I'm going to embrace that and I'm going to go for it. And I think the difference, um, the difference in like a, a Hollywood film or if you're just a writer, or if you're just a director is the difference between them and I guess McGee Sarton is that we own everything. Like we do everything. Like mm -hmm. we, we film it, we write it, we edit it, we market it. Like we do everything. So I don't have to go wait for a company to, you know, put it out there. And that's why I chose Vimeo because, you know, Amazon have to wait weeks for them to put it on prime, you know, Netflix, that's a completely different process. Right. Um, and you do that when you have like funding, you have sponsorship, like you do like, that's when it's available. But like Vimeo is worldwide. People have seen the movie in Taiwan, uh, Germany, Ghana, like, People's is world. It's a worldwide film, and um, and oh. it took me three hours to put it on Vimeo versus two weeks oh. on Prime. So I think you have to figure out like what works for you, like what gets you know, what's your focus, what's your target, what's your audience, and and that's you know that's just really the difference. Is I have the luxury where I can go say okay, if I want to make this film, I have the equipment to go ahead and you know put it out there, and um, yeah. But I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to like working with other people to have their own ideas. And, you know, right now it's just, you know, what we think about. And Sarton, you know, comes from uh, that's my best friend growing up. We uh, his name is Trey Sarton. You may know his family. Uh, his mom is Kim White. And like we grew up together. We've known each other since we were like two or three. And he's from Bogalusa as well. And we went to UL oh, together. Wait, stop. Wait, Wh who's his mother? Kim White. That's my cousin. Okay. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even know that. So there's another connection. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he um like we been been to school together our whole life and we came together and I was like, you know, let's start something. So that's wow. just another yes, I mean it's simple. I mean, in my opinion, it's well, the way I look at things, it's easy. You know, if if you like in my in my case, you know, it all started with one camera and that camera is powerful. And that's what I love the most about the sports network is because um, it is my Andrew Moses, the owner of uh, Lionhead Fitness in Bogalusa. He was in the film as well. He uh, he told me a long time. He said, your your sports network is going to be more influential than your film. And I was like, I don't know, you know. Maybe, maybe so. And the reason he was saying it was because it's it's gonna always be there. Like eventually Milltown is gonna be like Deacons for the Fence, you know, it was a movie about Bug Lusa and if you wanna go watch it, go watch it. Impactful, whatever you, you know, however you feel about it. Well the sports network, <clears throat> excuse me, the sports network is going to always my frat brother, Mike. <laughs> uh <laughs> my my the, the sports network is gonna always be there. Like it's gonna always Friday night. Um, I never saw the sports network being so big. Uh, that was that had last football season thirty thousand viewers worldwide. Um, and for me, it was important to put Bogalusa like on the stage and make it look as look as official as it did. Uh, <clears throat> people were watching it uh, on their TVs, on, you know, on their phones. I remember. I think it was the Franklin game, I believe it was. First game of the year. It was the same night as game five of uh, the NBA Finals. And it had 20,000 viewers during game five of the Finals. And it works because you can be watching the Finals on your TV and you can pull up Lumberjack football on your iPad or your cell phone, you know, yeah. so or your computer. You know, it works, you know, and that's the power of the Internet and technology. And um, I do feel like in the long run, you know, the sports network could grow to, you know, doing, you know, certain schools, not just, you know, Bogalusa, you know, it could, 
it can grow, you know, even more. So. Okay. We have Ms. Dana Walker saying, uh, we thank you for BSN. The family from around the country is able to watch my nephew play his senior year. Yes, more family. They could have. Yeah. <laughs> That, that, that's cool. Yeah. Too. You know, I, I guess I didn't really think of it from that perspective, too, that you are connecting people, you know, around the world. And, and, and because there are people who are from Bogus that have, you know, connections here mm. that, um, you know, can't be here for those games and, you know, and all of that. And, and you're giving them an opportunity to be able to to be there and experience it uh, from a distance. So that's an amazing service that you're providing as well. And and also it like when I look at the image of Bogalusa, like when you think of uh, like when I moved away and all you hear about is like crime and, you know, when they look at the younger kids, they think they're this certain way. Like they think they're just aggressive, rude, disrespectful young men. But on the sports network, you get to see who they really are. And it's not just you know, hearsay. You get to see them at, in the locker room. You get to see how well they speak. Um, you get to see, you know, just how they interact with uh, with each other. It's not, you know, what it's perceived to be. And that's another thing, man. It's, it's putting, it's like shedding light on the positivity in Bugaloosa. Because all you hear is negative. That's all you hear. Right, right. And that's all people are going to, you know, talk about, you know, even like if you live in Bugaloosa and you see things like and you feel like it's negative, like, most people harp on the negative and the positive. And I think uh, Coach Coach Cummins said that in the movie. You know, they harp on the negative more than the positive. So right. you look up and, you know, it gets to show, you know, Bug Loose in a different light. You know, you get to see the behind the scenes, the close up. Because nobody's ever seen, like, besides WWL, like Friday Night Football, that's the only time you see, you know, Bug Loose on TV, you know, football on TV. But now we can say we have a network. You know, and I say we because I mean it, it's mine, but it's it's us, it's ours. You know, we can pull up. You know, Franklin doesn't have one. You know, <laughs> you know, Rondo doesn't have one. Covington doesn't have one. I mean, they can have one. You can you know, reach out to me. We can work out something. But you know, Bogalusa has a sports network. Yeah. You know, in the past, um, a lot of people compared it was like you know this is the first time we've been able to see Lumberjack football on TV since Channel Seventeen, and I was like you know. That's big because, you know, what makes it even bigger is the fact that you didn't get to see that game till like Saturday, Sunday after it happened. Like now mm -hmm. we can watch it as it's going on and, you know, we can watch it live and uh, yeah. and watch, you know, the the games. And I think another thing that Mr. Tim from Channel 17, like I know he had growing up, he had owned the movie theater and that was why I was so big to uh actually do a premiere in Bogalus because that would have been that was that movie premiere was like the first time a movie, a movie has been shown in Bogalusa since at least almost 20 years ago whenever mm -hmm. the movie did it closed down so right. there's like different milestones that you know we were trying to pass up so well, well let me ask you this so you mentioned earlier that um that now your your film is being seen you know all around the world, you know, you mentioned Taiwan. Um, have you had any feedback from from those other places who've seen it? Because I'm, like I'm, I'm the reason I'm asking that is just because um, it's one thing to be from Bogalusa, or you know, and 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 be able to watch the film because it's a documentary about Bogalusa from that perspective. But I wonder how that's received. Um, and, and whether or not it's enough, it could be people within the country. Like, have mm -hmm. you gotten uh, feedback from other folks who aren't necessarily from here? I received feedback from people like um, some people that live in D.C. and other people that are from Louisiana that live in smaller cities like Bogalusa. And they, you know, one guy told me he's he probably just graduated college. He was like he was debating whether he was going to go back home and um, either work like in the field, in his field in, you know, for the federal government or go back home and do something. He was like, Milltown inspired him to move back home and, you know, work with kids and things like that. Um, another guy reached out. Um, he's from uh, Derrida. And he was saying how Derrida is similar, similar to Bogalusa. Another guy saying Generet is similar to Bogalusa. Like all these small towns, you know, have the same or similar story that Bogalusa has. 
and how it inspired them to start nonprofits and scholarships and things like that uh, for their city. So um, it's it really I didn't think it was going to be, like I said, as big as it was. And it really inspired like a lot of people, uh, young and old, you know, to really focus on like changing their community and kind of like wake up and understand that, you know, we control like our future and like, we control uh, what ne- what happens next in our community. And uh, like I said, it goes back to just harping on the negatives. Like we, when we realize that, you know, we can control the next positive thing that happens. And I think everybody get on board and they'll do it. Love that. Love that. So, so tell me this in, in the interviews that you uh, conducted and putting together the, uh, the film Milltown, um, is there any particular interview or moment from an interview that stands out to you maybe as either surprising where you learned something that you didn't know or maybe there was a reaction from someone that uh that you didn't expect you expected them to react one way and they reacted another way or they just gave you information that you didn't have before anything that stands out what stood out to me the most and i don't know how she feels about me about to say this but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what stands out to me the most is uh the mayor um miss Perrette. um like growing up like i hear all the stories of like her race you know and being in bogalusa you know growing up back then and understanding uh how it was during those times when she grew up i really feel like i was able to understand her side way more Cause I'm actually listening to why she feels the way she feels. And part two goes deeper into that of um, like how she was like growing up and how race affected her household. But Miss Perrette, her story to me, um, I, I understood it more like hearing it from her mouth and understand, you know, what happened with her. But go watch yeah. part two. Part two goes deeper, you know. Okay, I, and I will. I promise you. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah. It's so, when you were interviewing, um, I'm did, I'm assuming you had like a list of questions that you had for folks, or or was it really just in the moment, off the cuff? And um, again, I'm just interested in your creative mm-hmm. process, and so your decision so, of, of who to talk to and and what to talk to them about, you know. Uh, insight into that so i had in my ipad 10 like general questions so it was like you know what what comes to mind when you think about Lusa? or what do you want the youth to know things like that just 10 10 to 15 general questions after that uh i created maybe 10 more questions that just catered to people like coach martin <laughs> just pop yeah. up on the screen <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so like just 10 questions that just catered to him. Like when did he start coaching at the high school? Uh, what was it like back then at Central Memorial? Things like that. And um, honestly, what I found out was, you know, I just let people talk because once they got, you know, comfortable in front of the camera and, you know, they just having a conversation. And it started off with the very first interview I did it was with uh, Kira Sampson of the uh, dance studio. That was the very first interview uh, early in the morning. And my I did the the uh, questions. Like I was asking her the questions for that interview. And then like my wife, she just, she learned like as we were going because uh, next thing you know about a third interview, she's in front asking the questions. And I actually got to get back and direct and, you know, just sit back and understand what was going on and look at things like, facial expressions and you know if sound is like if is a car passing by that's going to mess up the footage and something we have to retake i actually got to do that um probably after like the second or third interview so that helped me because now i can you know really protect like perfect the film as um uh, as we're filming so it got it got way easier um uh, probably by day day two or day three like we knew what we were looking for we knew the concept. We knew 
how I was going to set up the equipment and while I was doing that, what she was doing, like we already had some down pack. Okay. Okay. So another thing that I was kind of, not kind of, I was impressed by was I guess just your, your knowledge or, or the sense of, of history, mm -hmm. um, not just of the story of Bogalusa itself, but of, again, of its people. Right. And um, it was it was interesting. Again, the people that you chose to speak to. Mm -hmm. um, one of the I, I guess what I'd like to know is how resistant. Or, or did you face any resistance when it came to the topic of of race in, in the history of Bogalusa? It came uh, it was one or two different instances uh when i was interviewing and they just they didn't want to touch it you know or when i asked the question or when the question was asked they just paused like oh my like wait a minute <laughs> can we can you ask the question over <laughs> because and i don't really don't understand why it is so difficult to talk about facts like mm -hmm. race has been an issue in bogalusa and the country for quite some time. I personally feel like, um, like in Milltown, I didn't harp on it because it was very blunt. That's what the Daily News said. It was like, it was very blunt. And when I explained it to him, I was like, yeah, because I don't need to go into detail on what happened back then because we know. We already know what happened in Bogalusa. But um, I, I went to a store on Columbia Street uh, while I was filming and, you know, the owners there, you know, they were open. They were a white couple and they were very open and, you know, wanted to actually have a conversation about race. Like they're, at the time, they were wondering, like, why was it so important that they were like you had the term black business, like black business owner? They were so like they didn't understand it. And I don't have a problem with pulling people to the side and, you know, having that conversation. That's how we get past all this. You got to be open to criticism. And if you really want to know something, you got to like understand it and be open to it. So we had a conversation. I was explaining things to them. And um, the her husband had on a Confederate flag. So I was explaining to him <clears throat> when he saw the Confederate flag, what he thought. But when a black person sees it, what we think or what I think. And we walked away laughing from it because I always say this about the Confederate flag. Like I asked him, I was like, why do you like, what do you think about it when you, when you hear about it or when you see it? He's like, that's our culture. That's the South. That's, you know, I said, okay, well, when I see it, I look at it, you know, as an army or a group of people that, you know, support an army or a certain location that, you know, didn't mind keeping slaves, you know, that's when I see it. But also I went deeper and I said, I don't understand why people even still like wave the flag because they lost, like they lost the war. So he laughed because he never looked at it that way. That's like the saints winning, like losing the Super Bowl, but they still get a ring. Like, I don't get, I don't get why you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want that. You wouldn't you like, you don't even wave that flag. So I, I didn't understand that. And that was just, uh, and you know, he didn't take offense to it. And like he he wanted to hear my side of it. I wanted to hear his side of it. And I think if people all over, especially Bogalusa, just understand that and just try to realize why people feel the way they feel, then we can move past all of that. Like we can we can move move on. We know what happened. The sixties was this. We had we played a big role in the civil rights movement. Don't take that history away from it because it happened here. I think we now need to focus on being able to say. The 60s was so bad in Bogalusa, and now it's so great. Like, we did all of this to get where we are now. I think we need to focus on getting to that point because all we're saying now is that, you know, Bogalusa was like this. Well, let's move forward and being able to say that now we are, you know, this great community now after, you know, 60, 70 years ago of how bad it was. Yeah. Uh, I'll... I'll tell you too, again, just being being honest. So sitting in the auditorium, you know, 
watching the movie, I didn't really know, I truly didn't know what to expect. I mean, you know, I'd seen, you know, the trailers that you had online, you know, where mm -hmm. I had like little snippets and stuff. So I knew people were going to be interviewed and I knew, you know, you're going to talk about, uh, but you know how you, you just don't know what the, you know, like if it's going to be a certain slant or dealing with a specific subject or, you know, what, what have you. So mm -hmm. I went in and I sat down and I was sitting um, almost directly across from uh, some older white ladies. Mm -hmm. And I, re I remember, uh, I, I don't remember, uh, you know, exactly who was speaking at the time, but I remember the first time you kind of addressed race in the film, mm -hmm. you know, was asking someone, you know, a question about it or to, to respond on it. And I, I remember I tensed up, <laughs> like physically tensed up, like as, as soon as it happened and part, and I was kind of looking out of the corner of my eye to see <laughs> what their reaction was going to be. And the, the coolest thing was at the, at the end, it like, the audience was it was definitely multicultural, right? Mm -hmm. And the coolest thing for me was everyone came out going, that was a great film. Mm -hmm. And I got the sense that everyone learned something and that they, um, it wasn't, it, I guess I'm just trying to speak to the whole idea of what you're yeah. saying about being able to have the conversation and then I, I think of it on, on a positive end. Right. What, how I felt, um, I told this to, I think my mom, how I felt watching what was big for me is that it was actually like the, the support I've gotten, you know, from everyone, of course. But for me, seeing that older generation of you know, white people there, that was big for a sense that they were around the age of being at that same school during those race riots back in the sixties. Right. Like right. the race, the, the age they are now, they were, they were in high school when it happened. They were probably students on that campus when it happened. And I guess that goes to show how far we've come. Like we have, you know, far long way to go, but just the fact that, you know, you know, black filmmaker, you know, they're there in the audience, uh, you know, viewing a film like that's pretty, you know, far from what it used to be. But at the same time, them being there in the audience at the same school that all of this happened in, you know, that was that was big as well for me personally, because that's that's just how I look at things, you know, and not saying that they're those type of people not saying that, but just the fact that they witnessed those things, you know, the riots and whatever happened, you know, and now being able to see it on the big screen and, you know, people talk about it. And that's, that was big for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and now that you mentioned that too. Yeah. I, I remember kind of feeling that way too. And, and that on some level crossing my mind of like, wow, look at this cross section of the community that's here, you know, especially, you know, like you said, you know, older folks, you know, <laughs> you know, that would have been there during that time, whether they were students or adults during that time, whatever, um, to see them there uh, mm -hmm. was actually kind of impressive to me as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, oh, Miss Sharon Bond. Uh, Hi, Bruce and Kevin, finally caught this, this stream. Would love to see the movie. When will it be shown again? Uh, BHS 1961 grad, also taught at Columbia Street Elementary in 69. The conversation has been needed for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good old Columbia Street, man. I, that yeah. was that was important to put Columbia Street in the film, and everything was calculated. Um, the backdrop of Miss Breeley, Miss Mitchell, and Miss Adams having the old, you know, torn down, well, not torn down, but the school how it is today as a backdrop. That was important because, um. Columbia Street was like, that was really a good school. Like, in the history of schools in Bogalusa, for me growing up, that was really a school that, like, we really learned there. We were a family. Everybody knew each other. It was, you know, classroom size or maybe, what, maybe 25 students. And, you know, I think Ms. Mitchell, she focused on, like, saying how it was a magnet 
and a, you know, it was a magnet school, but we had a magnet class and a regular class. And, and during the film, she didn't, she like, she was like, I don't know if I should say this or whatever, but it was very important that she said it because, you know, she was saying that it wasn't a true magnet school because you had regular students there. But at the same time, those, you know, regular class students learn from the magnet students. And honestly, I think it's true because, I mean, we look at it. We never asked, like as Columbia Street magnet school students, we never asked, what, were you in the magnet class or the regular class? We just asked, did you go to Columbia Street? Because yeah. if you went to Columbia Street, you were already on that tier, on that level, um, because, you know, we actually felt like we like we, we were learning there at that school. And, you know, I, I feel like everyone, and there's nothing against like Terrace and uh, like Long Avenue, Pleasant Hill, nothing like that. It's just we knew like what we were producing there. Like we knew what level we were on. And I think when I look back at it, like everybody that went to that school, like we we're all successful in our own way today. And I think Columbia Street played a role in it. That's awesome. Well, Miss Miss Dana Walker was kind enough to uh, beat me to the punch, uh, <laughs> so she uh, put a link in the comments. So anybody who's watching this, uh, if you if you look here, uh, if you haven't seen or if you have seen it, you need to see it again because uh, I, I count myself as one. Uh, it's now streaming on video, so part, uh, Vimeo. So part one, there's the link, and part two, there's also another link. So uh, watch it. It's a great film, uh, just on its own merit. And if you do have a connection to Bogalusa, it uh, it'll have even more resonance, you know, for you. Yeah. So uh, so do that. And, and thank you, Miss Dana, <laughs> uh, for doing that. Uh, so that is in the comments now. Um, so let me ask you about uh do you have any current projects or future projects that that you're excited about or uh be willing to share with us yeah i have uh, i'm working on another film um uh, this is a, about a story in saint martinville i can't really give too much away about it just yet but okay uh we we did a casting call uh we sent out that information about two weeks ago and we're gonna be going over the profiles uh, the next week and, you know, decide on the cast for that film. We're going to be filming March 19th through the 25th. Um, so on my page, it has like all the details on my personal page. Uh, if you want to be an extra or anything, you know, just reach out to me and uh, send me an email and, you know, we can set it up. But uh, primarily going to be filming in St. Martinville. Um, so I'm in Lafayette and it's possible I'm going to be filming in uh, Bogalusa. For some scenes, so I'll be in Bogalusa, and like I said, if you want to be extra, just let me know. <laughs> but uh, film-wise, like I said, that's March. Um, I do have something I want to do, probably closer to football season. This one's gonna be uh, it's gonna be called Lumberjack Pride. Um, that's gonna be, you know, mainly on the history of sports. Uh, in Bogalusa from, you know, basketball, football, baseball. So I'm gonna, this is going to be a documentary style. Uh, but like I said, we're going to start filming uh, later on in the year towards probably August. And um, the cast isn't decided yet. Uh, but, I, you know, I do know people like, you know, Coach McGee and everyone that's still in the area, uh, like legendary coaching and, players that are still in the area, you know, you, know, you can't just, you know, just be on the team. Like I, I needed to know your name, like, you know, <laughs> I need somebody <laughs> that's known. And actually I put a post out there uh, a few months ago uh, towards the end of last year of uh, like, who did the community think should be in it? Cause I honestly only know about probably a class of 99, you know, down to when I was in school. And I, like, I want people that were, you know, playing on that, you know, first championship team. And, you know, if they played at Central, you know, they were, you know, on that first team integrated. So, yeah, so that's coming up towards the end of the year. So Lumberjack Pride will be the next film about Bogalusa. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I look forward to it. I really look forward to it. So I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to, what I teased earlier, 
uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> about the mystery. Uh, do you already know what it is? Uh, mm, no, I don't. No, okay. <laughs> so, so let me just tell you really quickly, like what the, the setup for me was. So, um, again, I'm in the auditorium. I'm watching your film. You know, the end credits and all of that, right? And so, mm -hmm. some music starts playing. Mm. Like, oh. And subconsciously, I'm singing along with it. And I was like, wait a minute, why do I know this song? And I'm, and because I didn't even recognize the voice at first. Oh, uh, Rosa you know, Buggles? Like, wait a second, hold on. And then I realized um, that it was uh, Mr. Gambino's song. Yeah, yeah. Because um, when he recorded that, back in the day he actually had me do the um the background vocal arrangements for it oh so really I sang on it and and wrote the background uh vocals on it so um and it was really weird because like i said you know i hadn't heard it out of mm. outside of being in the studio or you know on my ipod you know or iphone yeah. or whatever and so all of, a, all of a sudden i'm just watching the credits and i'm singing along like why do i know this song <laughs> you mm. know so uh, I, I teased him. I went by by his restaurant and, and, and said uh, uh, that that was really cool. I said I got to be in the movie too. <laughs> uh, so I, I didn't. Uh, so after I interviewed him and his wife, um, like that's when he you know told me that you know he had a few songs or whatever. So you know I'm like okay you know let me hear them and you know and uh, go from there. So he sent them to me and. Um, my wife, she was like, at first when I played it, she was like, no, that can be the end credits. Like, I was like, no, I think that is the perfect song for it. <laughs> and then um, I reached back out to him and I was like, hey, can you tell me like who wrote it and who was singing it and all that stuff? And I've known him since at least like 2002 because my sister worked at Beano's uh, when she was in high school. Oh, wow. So I've known Mr. Tony, you know, for quite some time. So um, I didn't recognize it was him singing it until he goes and he's like, yeah, that's, that's me. I'm like, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, thank you, man. Thank you for uh, adding to Mealtown. Appreciate it. <laughs> honored. Honored. <laughs> um, so any, um, well, let, let's do this real quick. Uh, Ms. Sharon Vaughn has something else to say. Uh, let's see, there were two little escorted by U.S. Marshals down Curving Road in front of national media. Folks were against the move and those who supported it. I know their names, but they would be in their late 60s by now, I think. Um, and then, oh, this is the one I actually wanted to show you. So she was talking about Columbia Street when you were talking about that. It was a wonderful, fully integrated school when I taught there. It was my first year to teach an integrated class. It was also the first school in Bogalusa to be integrated. I did not know that. Uh, Ms. Womack was principal when I was there. Oh, and then that's the second part I just showed you was the second half of what she was saying. Um, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that either. Yeah. So, yeah, there's so much history here. And one of the things that, like I said, I always want this program to be um, educational, inspirational. And and I think you, you provided all of that <laughs> uh, through... Uh, just talking about your journey to doing this and just showing what is possible, you know, and also showing that you can have difficult conversations. Like we don't need to be afraid to have, you know, uncomfortable conversations. It, it's okay, you know, and it's necessary for us to, you know, to move on past it, like as you were saying, you know, mm -hmm. and to have growth from it. So um, I thank you for setting that example and for, uh, providing us with something that, you know, will, I, I know you were given the comparison of uh, the sports network versus the film, but I mean, but the film will live on too. So now yeah. it's, you know, it's now documented and mm -hmm. it's something that we can always draw, you know, uh, draw from. So, so thank you for that. It, I, I know it meant a lot to me and I, I that's why I made a point that day. Um, mm -hmm after seeing it to stick around, you know, and after you had a chance to greet everybody and get pictures and sign autographs and all yeah. that stuff, I'm waiting. I won't, I'm waiting. Cause I just have to meet this young man and, 
and uh and just say thank you for it so thank you i, I, I appreciate I, you i think i appreciate your uh, support i do absolutely so uh anything else that you want to uh share with us or uh anything i i left out that you want to mention uh only probably thing i can think of is like like the future of like um the sports network um i want to do my, my goal is to get like high schoolers in the community that's into broadcasting where they can like intern and you know at least go into college saying that you know i've you know done this for two years i understand broadcast to a certain extent um so i want to kind of i'm in the process of start uh setting that up uh either with dana um with her uh with brilliant minds um mm -hmm. or with um or not or but also with the school as well um because you know that will give them opportunity to, to see the production side of you know espn or you know fox sports where and that's the thing that i didn't realize like going into it i just thought you know i was going to just set up my computer and you know i knew what angles and everything i knew how to film but after week one after that first game it was when i realized you know what was at stake like with, with the the software that i had and honestly so during the game my wife and i are in the press box like we have our own little booth um we don't talk the entire game like at all because there's a microphone right next to like hanging out the window to get the uh, audio of the field noise. And then also that mic picks up Coach Martin, who's, you know, speaking over the intercom. And thank you, Coach Martin, too, you know, for <laughs> that was our first year, you know, doing it. I, I called Coach Martin um, probably two weeks before the season. I'm like, are you doing the game this year? And he was like, yeah, I am. I was, you know, he, was, he was like, that's my my first year back and all this other stuff. So I was like, okay. And uh, so him and Mr. Janola, like they were in the booth next door to us. But, um, Throughout the you know season, like we learned a lot. I was happy we were able to put like local businesses on the network because you know we do commercials and all that too. So it's like a full. If y'all have the opportunity to go back, go to the Facebook page for the Buggles Sports Network and go back and look at the most recent game, which was uh, against Madison Prep, the football game, the playoff game, and just go look at the broadcast and it has it has um, commercials and different advertisements on there. And um, starting next month in March, we're going to be doing baseball. So we'll be starting uh, on baseball, the baseball games uh, at the high school. So got baseball coming up. And, of course, we'll be back for football uh, in the fall time. So Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest has been Mr. Kevin McGee. He's director, filmmaker, entrepreneur, uh, mentor, motivator, <laughs> and all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Um, help help spread the word too. You know, don't just see it yourself. Mm -hmm. Share it with your friends and family, and and let's let's get this out there and and get it. I mean, it's already on the map. He put it on the map. Yeah. But let's, yeah. let's cover up more of the map <laughs> with it. And one more thing, I forgot. Uh... Sure. Of course, I have like the Milltown shirts and everything. But what I've done recently is started a campaign. And when you watch part two at the very end, it's going to you're going to see inspire change with this same, you know, Louisiana logo with uh, a star, a red star with Bogalusa. And that's like the the campaign that I've been pushing. Um, I've got flags. um uh, Next week, I'll be uh, at City Hall. They're going to hang a flag that has the Milltown name on it. And at the bottom, it says Inspire Change. And that's big for me, too, because when I look at the history of Bogalusa and, you know, just the race history on it, to know that you know, a flag, you know, with inspiring change, a change of city is going to be flying there. That's big. And I also have uh, these, I don't know if you can see, these wristbands that has inspired change on it. And then on the other side, it has Milltown. Uh, so just doing things like that. And I want to actually start a scholarship uh, that's going to be, 
going to have like an inspired change. And that's going to be the main focus on it. And, you know, just try to get the younger kids involved in the next step of making Bogalusa what we want it to be. Not necessarily what it used to be, but better than what it used to be. So there you go. There you go. All right, man. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let's stay warm in Dallas and all that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Thank we'll y'all see you for watching. Trip. All right. Thank you, man. All right. Y'all have a good one. All right. I don't want to thank all of you also for joining us. And just before we go, I do want to remind you, let me throw this on the screen really quickly. Today, uh, we are having our Believe Family Zoom party. So if you uh, are not aware of it, everyone's invited to it. It's free. It's just we're just going to hang out with our directors and uh, members of our Believe team. And we're inviting whether you, you know, participants, uh, uh, as, as Spider and O said, we want mama, grandmama, grandpa, uncle, auntie, nephew, cousin, everybody. Just come and have some fun with us. We're, we're going to have some fun just messing around and playing games and some different things. And part of it is a way for us to say thank you to all the communities that we have visited and have become part of our Believe family, but also to introduce ourselves to, to even more folks so that you uh, know who we are, what we do, and what we're about. And to, you know, let you in on, you know, we've got some stuff coming up. So you're going to see Believe this year. All right. So, so check it out. Um, I will, I will put a link in here in just a minute to it. Uh, but it's the Believe family Zoom party. Uh, it is at 6 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Central. It will be uh, on Zoom, <laughs> as we said, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So all of the directors will be there. So our, our folks will be broadcasting from uh, New York and California and Michigan and Kansas and all the different places <laughs> where they are. So uh, come on in and join us, meet some, make some new friends and all of that. Have a few laughs and uh, just join us for this this really fun time. Again, thank you for watching. And we will uh, definitely see you guys again next time. But I hope to see you guys in a couple of hours at the Believe uh, Zoom as well. So until next time, live long and prosper. And we will see you guys. Thank you. <laughs>